Hey everyone, Deal here with Pacific Sun Technologies. It's, it's been a while since I've done a video and for good reason. Thanks to all of you that have supported the channel and have decided to go solo with us. I've been very busy along with my staff managing your projects, ensuring each and every project is completed to the highest standard. With that said, I thought a video related to the actual process in going solar would be something of value to those of you that haven't quite made the switch to clean renewable energy with us yet. I'm going to break down the process step by step and show various scenarios related to the project that could extend your timeline, like an electrical panel upgrade or battery backup. For those of you interested in going solar, be sure to visit us online by using that link down in the description below. We really do make the process easy for you to go solar because we handle everything for you in-house from start to finish. So don't hesitate to request your free quote from us today. All right, so let's get into the details of the process in going solar. Keep in mind, this is how our company handles projects, and this may not be the same approach for others in the industry. So it will give you at least a fundamental guide. The first step is to obviously request and review quotes. Now, I personally believe in just getting two or three quotes. No more, no less. If you can get two or three, I think that's a good amount. I've had some customers tell me that they've received five, seven, ten. Heck, one guy told me he had over 15 quotes before moving forward with us. Mind you, that was over several years, but still, that's a lot of different quotes. And the information itself is going to kind of get boggled up and could be pretty confusing and you could think you're getting something from one company that you're not. Yeah, so try and keep it down to like two or three in my opinion. But regardless, that is technically the first step in going solar. The second is actually selecting the company and if you go with us, you'll accept your online proposal and sign your home improvement contract all electronically in the comfort of your home. We, we really streamlined this process. From there, our project coordinator from our office would contact you to schedule a home inspection, also referred to as a site visit. This technician is going to come out to verify the details related to your project and what was proposed. They'll be measuring the roof, checking the condition of the roof, checking the electrical panel, checking where some of the electrical equipment may need to be installed. They're going to check your structural details and take various photos along the way to ensure we can actually complete the project as proposed with no changes in the price. That's really something all of us would hate to occur later on, so we want to catch them late up front. Now, there aren't a lot of things that could actually cause a change order. You'd be surprised. We've been doing this for 15 years, and really there's just two things that most often come up that sometimes get neglected in conversation during that first review process. The first being the main electrical panel upgrade. Some don't realize that sometimes you need to upgrade that electrical panel. And the second being a new roof. Sometimes that underlayment isn't sufficient for the solar, or maybe you don't have plywood. There's various reasons on the roof. Now, a lot of this can easily be identified during the beginning process when you're reviewing quotes. You just need to send some photos or provide that information to your sales rep. Keep in mind, if you're getting battery backup, additional costs may occur due to the configuration of your home and the complexity of the project. Most companies are budgeting for a specific design and they have a little wiggle room if there's some minor modifications, but drastic changes to how they would typically install a battery backup, especially for us, is more than likely going to add to the cost. Also, if you're doing a panel upgrade, there is a small chance, very small chance, that the utility company could have special requirements like the panel being relocated somewhere else, and that could actually add cost. So not a lot of reasons to worry about it. And you can most definitely talk about them up front when you're getting your proposal. Now, after the site visit is performed, a project manager is actually going to review the details from the technician and then review it with the proposal and the contract. If everything looks good, they give a green light for the sales manager to collect your deposit if you opted in paying cash or do your loan application with you over the phone. 
If the project manager finds any issues after the site visit, your proposal and contract will actually be voided out with us. And the sales rep will revise your quote for you to review and hopefully re-accept with these additional changes. That could be that panel upgrade or you really do need roof work. And I would have to say 95% of our customers receive a green light and that everything was typically accounted for during the proposal review process. Our sales reps are really good about asking those questions up front. So you really shouldn't worry too much about any change orders from us as long as you're up front with everything related to your home, specifically related to the roof and the electrical panel. Now, since 95% of our projects don't have change orders, we'll be moving on to the next step, which is actually to collect your deposit of $1,000. You shouldn't be putting any more down, regardless if you go with any company besides us, it's $1,000 should be the max for the deposit. And then you would wanna do your loan application if you were doing that. Once you've signed your loan docs or made that deposit, we actually will begin working on your project by having our design team work on the plan set and the engineering. This typically takes about two days. Projects with batteries can take a little longer, like an extra day, so you could be looking up to three, but we're honestly really good about getting a set of plans back to you within a day or two. The design team lets your project coordinator know the plans are ready for homeowner approval. I think it's important for me to really mention that the next step is actually very unique to us from my understanding as very few companies actually require homeowner approval of the plans before submitting for the permit. Now some might send them to you, but they don't actually ask you to review anything. So for us, our project coordinator is gonna send you a copy of the plans digitally to review. You'll need to confirm the details and approve them via email before we do anything else. Um, this same set of plans is also great for you to keep for your records if they're acceptable and for you to use to submit to your homeowners association if you have one. Um, if you need any changes, maybe something might be misspelled, you would just let us know and we'll revise them and send you a new copy. Now, assuming you approve the plans, your project coordinator submits them for permit. Now, depending on your jurisdiction, this could actually take a day, you know, 24 hour turnaround. This is pretty far and in between, I will admit. There's like one or two jurisdictions. Um, more often than not, we're looking at two to four weeks to obtain the permit. If you have a battery backup system, your permit is really gonna take even longer in some cases. Some jurisdictions like LA County just can take up to six months. They're just really disorganized when it comes to batteries. But honestly, Orange County, San Diego County, and Riverside County aren't that bad. I'd really just say it's LA that could take up to six months. If you have an electrical panel upgrade, let's not forget, you may have to wait for the utility company to actually approve the panel upgrade and provide a work order. The scheduling of your project will actually occur around the utility company schedule. If we're doing a panel upgrade and they require a disconnect reconnect, that's where they come out and shut off the power for us to upgrade the electrical panel. Right now, as of this video, SDG&E is taking three to six months for scheduling, depending on your territory. Um, Edison is a little bit better, but I've never seen Edison this backed up. They're, they're up to two months out, depending on your territory. So some areas are like, you know, a couple weeks out, but I've, I'm seeing more and more areas within Edison's territory where they're over two months. Just a word of advice, there is no way to expedite the utility company. So if someone tells you they can, they're full of it, you know, because they are very, very strict about that type. They do not do any favors for any company. I mean, I know people very well that actually work for the utility company and they couldn't get, for even working for them, they couldn't get the process expedited. So don't be fooled by someone saying, oh no, it doesn't take that long. It will likely take that long. Now let's assume your project was straightforward. No panel upgrade, no batteries. So we get the permit back, well, you know, two weeks. You know, so we're three weeks in total into your project. Well, your project coordinator will inform you of this. Hey, we got your permit, everything's a go. I'm gonna work on getting you on the schedule over the next week. So you're gonna be put on the schedule at our next available date. Keep in mind, we tend to be about four to six weeks out for installation and we work off of a first come, first serve permit basis. You know, so you could have one person where their permitting is taking six months, whereas another person, maybe it took two weeks, you're gonna get installed before that person, even if they sign their contract before you. 
it's just the, the most effective way for us to do it because we don't know when we're gonna get the permits back exactly. And the main reason we have a backlog too, which you shouldn't really be upset that we're four to six weeks out, it's a good thing we try and stay right in that range, that's our backlog. We don't subcontract out the work. So if you want your work done by us, and which we do, we don't wanna sub it out, we want it done right and to our standard. So we can't sub it out in that extent. So you gotta understand that we're gonna have a bit of a backlog. The day of your installation itself will likely only be one day. So that's the good news. If you're at least getting just solar, if you're getting a battery backup system, this could add an extra day, depending on how extensive your project is. If you're getting a panel upgrade, that could also add an extra day. Um, if you're doing a panel upgrade, solar and a battery backup, you could be looking up to three days, but we're usually really good about getting projects completed in under two days with battery backup and or a panel upgrade. Our crew tends to arrive around seven or eight in the morning. The first thing they're gonna do is knock on your door and introduce themselves to you and go over the areas they'll need access. You may need to move your cars out of your driveway so that way they can put their ladders up to get up onto the roof. Now the roof crew will actually begin right away on your roof. They're gonna you know, start doing the layout per the plans. They're gonna be measuring things, making sure all the setbacks are appropriate, making sure all the modules fit accordingly, and then start mocking up where all the bases are gonna go, and then start pulling tiles to install the tile replacement products that we actually use for our solar projects. Now, we currently are using Pegasus Solar, which is a great product, I really do like it, but we have used Iron Ridge and Quick Mount in the past. We've actually used them a lot more than Pegasus. We only switched to Pegasus because of inventory constraints with these other two manufacturers, which is a little disappointing, but it's all right. They're all great products that allow us to offer a 25 year warranty. Be sure to check out the video I've done previously on the Iron Ridge knockout tiles to actually learn more. While the roof crew is working away up top on the roof, the electrical team is actually gonna be down below on the ground working on your new equipment that needs to be installed along with some of the conduit. If you are having an electrical panel upgrade, they're gonna be working diligently to have the panel upgrade performed quickly because more than likely your power's off and we need to get it restored as soon as possible. During a panel upgrade, in most circumstances, the utility comes out, they disconnect the power from the street or from the pole, and then we start working away on the electrical and removing all the old circuits in the old panel and getting all the new circuits wired into the new panel and getting any new grounding performed before an inspection with the jurisdiction is performed and which needs to pass for the utility to actually come back and reconnect the power and re-energize the service. Um, that meter release is really valuable. So our electricians are pretty busy during a panel upgrade and our goal is to always have this completed before 3 p.m. Most cases it's done before one, but just keep that in mind. If you were having a battery backup system installed, the electrical team is actually going to be pre-installing all the new equipment, which can include the automatic transfer switch, emergency loads panel, gutter boxes, pre-labeling of the circuits for relocation, pre-pulling any wire for the emergency loads, and so on and so forth. The main reason they try and pre-install a lot of this equipment is if we are coming back on a second day, when they shut the power off to wire up the backup equipment, it's only off for a couple hours, maybe one or two, because they have everything in place. Once your equipment is fully installed, the solar modules and the equipment down below, the crew will typically commission the system and connect it to your home Wi-Fi network so you can have access to the monitoring. This doesn't always happen on the day of the installation, but it's always our goal to try and have it occur. Sometimes you'll have to wait until a technician comes out during your inspection with the jurisdiction for the final. Now, your project coordinator will reach out to you after the installation to schedule the final inspection with the jurisdiction. You may have multiple inspections depending on your project and your jurisdiction, which they will advise you on accordingly, so that way you're not in shock about the multiple inspections. On the day of the inspection, the technician will typically go over the system, make sure everything is painted, the lath and the stucco is done, that any drywall patches are completed. Basically, they're gonna do a final walkthrough, make sure all the finishing touches and the system just looks great. Uh, they're of course gonna make sure it's on and operational if it wasn't commissioned during your installation with the crew. After passing the inspection, we're pretty much on the final steps of your project, which is really just obtaining the permission to operate or PTO from the utility company by submitting your net energy metering paperwork. We handle all this 
paperwork for you. So you don't have to stress. Your project coordinator will actually email you everything that needs to be provided and then sign so that way she can submit the application on your behalf. This is an area, for some reason, a lot of companies tend to get hung up on and you hear these bad stories about, oh, it's been six months and I haven't gotten PTO and I can't turn on my system and yada, yada. I'm really not sure why because it's relatively easy, at least in our experience, to obtain your permission to operate. For a solar only system, it's usually like less than a week. If you have batteries, it can be a little bit longer. We tend to see around three weeks. But all in all, we don't see it being like those horror stories of like months and months. That's pretty odd in my opinion. After we receive your permission to operate, your project is complete. There isn't really anything else left for us to do, but you can always leave us a five-star review online. We'd really appreciate that. Now, this video was really a bit lengthier than I had hoped, but you know, I feel it had some really great insight into the process and provided clarity in what it takes to go solar and why there is a timeline to the system. You know, we try and estimate with customers. It's, our goal is around 60 days. We try and do it faster than that. Sometimes it goes a little longer. I mean, it could go up to six months, depending on your project's specifications, but 60 days is a pretty good timeline in my opinion. Now let's recap the process of going solar. You obtain and review your quotes, accept the proposal and sign the contract. Have a site visit performed. You put down your deposit or you sign your loan docs. You review and approve your plan design. Receive your permit approval. Have the system finally installed. You're gonna pass your inspection and receive permission to operate from the utility company and start saving money. That last 10th step is really just to leave that five-star review for us. Well, that's it for this week's video. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to our channel by clicking that big red button right down there. And for those of you interested in going solar, please be sure to request your hassle-free quote from us by using the link right next to that red button down below. We really do make it easy for you to make the switch to clean renewable energy because we handle everything for you. Thanks again for watching. Until next time.